name is Gary Haymeyer. I am from Auburn, Illinois. I'm first vice president of the National Corn Growers. <coughs> uh, I'm very happy to be here today. And I probably share uh, some emotion when I say we can grow enough corn to feed and fuel the world because we can do that. Last night, I had the opportunity to set up a pioneer meeting where I heard people talk about 246 and 260 and even 300 bushels of corn. We have that potential. We can grow a large crop. I have, uh, I have probably let you guys down this year, and uh, I understand you had a pretty good crop this year, right, Ed? Here in Michigan, all you guys? Some places. Some places. Well, in our place in Illinois, my county average is about 182, but this year it was 149. So we let everybody down. Sorry about that, Clark. This next year we'll pick up the pace. How do I say that we're going to be able to feed and fuel the world? Just by looking at these charts, these three graphs here. If you take a 35-year outlook, the red line, you can see that we have trend line yields that have been pretty consistent throughout many of the years up to about 2005. And then the 15-year uh, line, it, it started going up at a sharper angle. And the 10-year line is even sharper angle than that. So our production of corn throughout the years has been, uh, as you can see, quite variable. We have uh, started out in 1995, we had about uh, 7.4 billion bushel of corn. And in 2000, we had almost 10 billion bushel of corn. And that was just a short five years. And now, uh, a year ago, we had 13 billion. And this year, we have about 12.5. Um, we think we have the technology, and uh, we saw Pioneer talk about a lot of the different programs that they have coming down online, and we're projecting by 2015 that we will be at 15 billion bushel. But the interesting part about this is that we're growing on the same amount of acres. If you look at the line above, this is kind of distorted in here, but it, the 90 million acres is about what we expect to be planted this year. We've heard from several different groups. And if you just follow the trend across, and you can see that uh, if we had a 180 bushel average, we'd almost have a 15 billion bushel corn crop this coming year. So <coughs> what we have is a lot of people, such as the Michigan corn growers, want to know what are we going to do with a 15 billion bushel corn crop should we have it? Because you know you can grow these crops on your farm. We had test plots last this year alone, this last year alone, and proved that we could do it if we have the weather that cooperates with us. So our purpose as national corn growers is to develop markets so that the markets and the yields come together at the same time. Uh, not exactly a perfect situation, but we give it a try. Feed and residual. Let's take a look at this. If you look across the line, again, the feed uh, for livestock feed has been fairly constant, if you want to get realistic about it, from about 2000 all the way up to uh, 2015, the amount of corn being fed to livestock has really not changed that much. So we're going to produce a ever increasing corn yield what do we need to do? We need to find new markets. Now, we worked very diligently, including Clark, who happens to be chair of the ethanol committee this year, to produce a product that we could continue to grow our market and utilize the corn instead of putting it into government subsidy programs that you had to pay. Uh, you remember the LDPs? Well, th those are long gone. When you look at this, across the top, you see that ethanol started out about 396 million bushel of corn. And right, right now, we're about 4.7 billion. Right between 2007 and 2015, we're about 4.7 billion bushel of corn going into the ethanol uh, process. But one of, the, this, one of the things that's very difficult to understand, and I've got another chart to show this, this year alone, we're producing one billion bushel of corn replacement, that's DDGS. That is the process of making ethanol. Roughly a third of the process of making ethanol produces the DDGS. 
We don't really get credit for that anywhere we talk about. In fact, you'll hear, well, you're using 38% of the corn crop to produce ethanol. That is correct. But of that, a third of that comes back, a billion bushels of corn equivalent comes back as DDGS. And you can see uh, across the bottom, our adjusted corn consumption by the ethanol industry would be reflective of that. Okay, exports, and, and uh, last night I was kind of bragging a little bit because I just got back from a mission trip with the Grains Council. We were in uh, India, Vietnam, and China. And I'll just tell you that I think that there's going to be uh, a record demand for corn from China uh, starting this next year because they don't have the yields that they've had in the past. But if you look at this line, this is fairly straight line too. 2.28 uh, all the way uh, to 2015 and 2.5 billion bushel. Currently this year we're 1.95 billion bushel of corn exports. And the point is we had a lot of, uh, of these programs that were very just the same yield year after year. And for us to continue to grow a market where you saw that we went from 8 billion bushel corn crop to 13 billion bushel corn crop, we need more demand. do it a different way. Okay, um, th this is one slide I really want to point out because I want to use, uh, if you see my little red dot, it's not going to show up. If you look at the top line, it says food and industry total. 1.2 billion, and you go across, and even in 2015, it's 1.4 billion. Then you come back down uh, to the middle line. You see, that's that's all the food and industrial uh, that we're using. And food and industrial means the seed corn and things like. That. And the next line shows that we are actually growing a new market: uh, polylactic acids. That's plastics. It's corn made into plastics, very similar to any products you get from. Uh, 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 using oil and ethanol, obviously everybody looks at that to see the, the large increase in the amount of corn we're going to produce. Well, in the future, and this is the one slide I want you to keep in mind, we've heard people talk about that we are burning food when we make ethanol. Right in the middle, it says food, seed and industrial. The next line is food. The amount of corn that we eat in this country going to food is 8% in 07, 08, 6% in 2015, and down to 5% in 2021. And my point is, we do, uh, sweet corn is a vegetable, hot corn is a vegetable. But when we eat corn, we're only eating like uh, corn flour, corn meal, corn oil. So when we make ethanol, we're not taking food out of people's mouths. That, that is just a misnomer. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But then again, I, I want to get down to the ethanol line with the DDGS credit. And you see, it, it, uh, I'm sorry, I want to do the ethanol line, which is, yeah, ethanol DDGS credit. So. In, in 2015, actually, the amount of corn we're using for ethanol production is 24%. It's not 38%, because we're also producing the DDGSs, which are added to it. And we never get any credit for that. OK, we've shown you that we can grow a crop, and, and that uh, we can continue to grow a larger crop in the same amount of acres. And now, can we produce uh, corn in an environmentally sustainable way? And I will be the first to tell you, farmers don't like the term sustainable. I don't either. However, the rest of the world does like that term. So what is sustainability? It's the meeting of the needs of the present while improving the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. One of the things that we can be very proud of in corn production is that all these graphs I'm about to show you are in great stead. The amount of insects per pound per acre 
are being reduced. That is sustainable. Herbicides have gone down from 1980 to 2005. Uh, insecticides have gone down from 2000 uh, to 2005. And the same thing, the amount of nitrogen that it takes to produce a bushel of corn has trended down because we're getting larger yields per acre. And that's very important. And we're going to continue to do that. In fact, there are new hybrids coming online that will allow the hybrid to take the nitrogen out of the air so you don't have to put the nitrogen in the ground. But all these trends are the same. This is nitrogen. This is phosphorus. This is potash. All three going in the right direction. Now, let's take a look here real quick at the potential change due to the biotechnology that we've been use, utilizing here uh, to make a larger uh, yields. You know, the blue line is about 1.6 bushel per acre increase, and it's been con kind of consistent. You know, we went from open pollinated corn to uh, single cross to double cross. Uh, then we started adding some molecular breeding to get specific uh, products that we wanted. And now we've added biotechnology. And if you take a look at the line after 2010, you're looking about 2012 to 2014. And that, that is when we're really going to take off and yield. So the projection up here, and I want, you to, I want to remind you, at 2010 here, we're at 152 bushel per acre. This is projected by the seed companies. All of them, this happens to be Monsanto, but Pioneer is the same way. That red line shows that we're going to be at 280 bushel of corn per acre. 280 bushel of corn per acre. This is an average. This is not a test plot. This is an average yield by the time we get to 30. It's only 20 years away. So what are we going to, as much as we're catching grief for the amount of corn we have right now, we have to develop markets in advance and be ready to produce, uh, have the corn available when these markets get to the fruition. I think this is a very in interesting slide. If you look across the top here, it says corn has huge potential for biofuels. And then on the left, it says 10, 15, and 20. That's 2010, 2015, and 2020. If you take 180 bushel per acre and you use 2.7 gallon per bushel, which is normally what we have been getting in, in production, and, and I'm sure that ACE does a little better job maybe than we do, but uh, in, in production of ethanol, you see that we're getting 486 gallons of ethanol per acre. And I think we're going to have to start thinking in different terms. If you add pericard, grain pericard to it, you add 18 gallon per acre. And then corn stover, which there's not much talk about, but uh, a, a lot of companies with the growth, en uh, growth energy and, uh, uh, have started working on a lot of stover, and they can 